This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. For 75 years, Tennesseans have been relying on Farm Bureau Health Plans for their health care coverage. Why? Better rates, better coverage, and better service. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and we are joined by the rest of Titans Radio. Coach Dave McGinnis and Rhett Bryan are here. Welcome. It is good to be on the OTP. Oh, it's, wow. gr- it's, nice. it's great to be here Well, it's, with everybody. It's great that it's game week. Oh, yes, And that's sir. why you're here, Yeah, because we are wanting to pub the fact that it is game week. Do we even have to pub the fact that it's game <laughs> week? It's so exciting. I know that people everywhere have been just itching for football. I've been itching for football. And so I'm so excited to have the gang back together to talk some ball but can we talk about something else before we talk about that? Because sure. I know we're all excited about football. But yes, I have... and Titans Countdown. Yes. Which comes on Thursday at what time? 5.30 Central. 5.30 Central. We'll talk Eastern. about that more in a minute. Go ahead. Yes, very, very excited. But I want to I want to address something because Mike had the opportunity to do something that is so cool. And you guys know Mike. He won't bring it up unless someone else brings it up. So I'm going to be the one that brings it up. Mike Keith was able to to, as part of the Music City Grand Prix, do a little ride-along, not like in a cop car, cooler than a cop car. He got to ride along with Mario Andretti. Did you guys know about this? I was alerted to this on Sunday, the afternoon he'd done it that morning, and he had video to back it up, and he had a racing helmet, a Titans racing helmet, and I got to admit, I fanboyed out because, I mean, this is Mario Andretti, for heaven's sakes. This is racing royalty. And to get a ride along with him and the experience that he got, I told him, I'm jealous. Yeah. (laughs) See, my only question, it it really was, but my question with everybody in the room is, so, Coach Mack, how long have you known Mario Andretti? (laughs) I talked to Mario Andretti when I used to go to the Indy 500. See, that's the the whole thing. For about 13 times. And he did call me and ask me how you would be at a (laughs) ride-along. And I said, one of the best dudes you'll ever have. But that seriously is a really cool thing because that is – I mean, that's not only racing royalty. I mean, that's sports royalty. Sure. That is sports royalty. I mean, that's like shooting hoops with Michael Jordan. Well, uh, trust me, the true realization of how fortunate I was because him just standing there at 82 years old, I'm like, that dude's been cool for 60-something years. Yeah. And, and I mean, who can you say? I mean, I remember being in the room with Arnold Palmer once. Same thing. Exact same feel. Arnold Palmer was that kind of cool and and was on ads well after he had finished playing golf and I mean because he was just Arnold Palmer. It's the same thing with Mario Andretti. That's I mean so you cool. say his name and people who don't know anything about racing still know that's the racing name. That's synonymous with racing. Mm-hmm. For anybody that doesn't have any idea what car racing is, and especially indie racing. I mean that is and by the way, I'm so glad that Amy brought this up. I saw the helmet yesterday with the autograph. Now, look, we all have cool stuff in our trophy rooms. That, to me, would be right at the front. It's right at the front. I have two things. Well, I have three things that I treasure in terms of collectibles. That's one of them because the helmet that Brian Myers had made was so cool, and I'm so appreciative of that. The fact that Mario Andretti signed it was so cool. I have the hard hat that I used to wear – when Nissan Stadium was being built. And it was an Oilers hard hat because we were the Tennessee Oilers. And so I still have that. And then I have a football signed by as many of the first-round picks as I could ever get to sign a Titans football. And that's the only signed thing outside of the Mario helmet that I have. But I love to look back at the first-round picks, and it's very cool. That's very cool. Here's what I need to know, Mike Keith. Yes. Did you scream? No. I did not scream. I yelled. Did you feel compelled to scream? Yeah. At one point, there was was one turn we took that it sort of took my breath away. I was told, you know, because I was mic'd, (laughs) and there are GoPro cameras, and we're going to show this at some point, so people will have a chance to see it. I realized this, so I was afraid of cursing. (laughs) <laughs> that's why they didn't ask me <laughs> yeah so so i didn't because you you know you you're about to go holy yeah you know. 
because I mean, he took those turns. Did you feel the G's? You feel the G's. You can feel it. You, the, you pull G's in those things. You can feel it. Yeah. But it was more fun than it was scary because once he started the car and you you had, you know, your stomach had gone the wrong way one time in a turn. Once you got used to that, you're like, this is just so fun. Okay. Okay. The question I have is. Are, were you aware? Did he tell you how fast you guys were going over the Korean Veterans Bridge? He did not I tell want... us, but I heard after the fact that it was supposedly between 160 and 170. Did that, like, jar the daylights out of Absolutely. you? Because I watched the I watched the race Absolutely. on television, yes. and you could see in their helmets, you could just see them, it, you know, of course that's not ideal for racing. It's a man-made bridge that traffic goes over at a regular speed. So I can imagine just it's like a jackhammer. Well, and what he told me, so I was the first one to get to go out. So he goes, hey, first lap, we're not going to go very fast because i got to warm the car up, the brakes and everything. And, I mean, so everything he was doing was kind of exaggerated because he was trying to get it going. And I thought, okay, that wasn't fast. And then when we took the second <laughs> lap, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that wasn't – the first lap was not fast. This is fast. Could you feel the gears shift? Yes. That's, that's something else. Too. Yes. The, the gears. The whole thing was – That's great. They look like soapboxes to me. I'm amazed that you were able to do it. Well, you know, he's smaller than I am. Yeah. I mean, he not is – Not a lot of room in those no, and, and vehicles. It's funny. I don't see how somebody like 6'1 or 6'2 could do it. Because, I mean, they would – I mean, you are in there. Yeah, the cockpit is they mold, very snug. They mold those things to their bodies. They do. Yeah, they're mold. Really? Yeah, yeah. they're mold. It's not just a standard. They mold everything to their driver's bodies. And, and he was very friendly beforehand. Very friendly. He was and about to scare the daylights out of you, yeah. But he, was a to- but he was a total pro. But once he's in the car, all business. I mean, 82 years old, but still all business. Well, it's pretty dangerous. I mean, and I'm I don't screaming, think you'd, yeah, I don't uh, you think know, you'd want someone loosey goosey. Yeah, you know, <laughs> get you some. I think I actually said that. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Well, it's on camera somewhere. <laughs> yeah, from so. the south, check so. it out. It's yeah, <laughs> Tennessee Titans talk. <laughs> Touchdown Titans. Yes. I just think that's really cool. I, I was well, thank thrilled you. that I saw some of the video of of you, you know, getting the helmet well, and you. getting in the car. That's a bucket list item. Mm. Yeah. Completely. And I did not get to keep the suit. That's what everybody's asked me. Did you get to keep the suit? The helmet is worth uh, – yeah. that, I, I, I know. That's where it's well, at my for mother. me. In fact, that would be the centerpiece on the dining room table for Thanksgiving would it, be that helmet. So my mother <laughs> – With some – Oh, you know, I know. With some stuffing. Horn of plenty and <laughs> So she's like, well, they did the suit to match Titans colors. I'm like, no, no, that's just their racing team. She goes, but it matched so well. I'm like, well, I know, Mom. But hey, was, she likes an outfit. I, I understand, but it was not meant – it was just the <laughs> – she I was trying to explain outfit. this. She goes, where's the suit? I'm like, well, Mom, it's just a suit they clean. and Yeah, just the ride-along suit. The ride-along suit. Such a cool thing you got to do. I, I couldn't let the OTP happen without talking well, about it. Well, to the OT people, thank you for the, the support. Very cool. Yes. Titans Countdown. Let's get to this. The two people who host Titans Countdown and the main person who is on are in the room. Titans Countdown, Thursday from Baltimore, 5.30 Central, wherever you hear the Titans games. It is a 6.30 kick. Give us some hints of the flavor of Titans Countdown for Thursday night so the OT people are, as they always are, ahead of the curve. I'm trying to pick, like, an ice cream flavor that is (laughs) spicy but in a good way. No, I think it's going to be great. I think we are going to do as much as we can to get people – Up to speed with all the news that has happened and get you ready for what you're about to see on the field. Because we know preseason's a little bit different. There are some names you might not recognize like you would, say, a Derrick Henry. There's a lot of other people on this team that we're excited to introduce you to. First of all, I want to thank our friends at Farm Bureau Health Plans. They are the ones who sponsor Titans Countdown and have for many years, and they'll do that again in 2022. Need great health care coverage with an affordable <laughs> price tag? Let Farm Bureau Health Plans coach you through it. They've been protecting Tennesseans for 75 years. Well, that was well done. Thank and, you. Uh, We've so, been together 25 years. Yeah, that's, that's true. We've got a new item that we'll start off with, and we'll hear from you and Coach Vrabel to start the show, as we normally do. And then Amy and I will go kind of rapid fire back and forth. And we you will hear from a lot of the stories and the people involved in this preseason game to one against the Ravens. Uh, for example, if you don't know who Julius Chestnut is, he wears number 36 from Sacred Heart. 
I think you're going to see him quite a bit in Baltimore, and uh, you will hear from him. You will hear from Malik Willis. You will hear from Traylon Burks. I've got a, an interview I did with Sam Okawanu. Sam Okawanu. Sam, Sam. Okawanu is an undrafted uh, rookie co- free agent. Are you going to go Okawanu, Coach, or are you just going to do Sam O? Sam. Sam. Okay. There it is, Coach Mack. Solidarity. Great he job, wears Sam. number 68 on defense. He is an undrafted free agent from Maryland who has an incredible story, much like some of his teammates. There are a lot of, of young men who are from Africa, and in particular Liberia. He saw some things as a, as a young age, uh, as an 11-, 12-year-old kid, that you, you shouldn't see in a, in a war-torn country, in a civil war. But he comes to America and goes through two or three different JUCO colleges, finds his way to Maryland last season, has a six-quarterback sack season, and – it's just a great story that needs to be told in some of the young men that will get a chance to play in, in, under the lights in an NFL game. So good stories. Yes. But then we get to the real stuff, which is Coach Mack's analysis of the game. Well, of course. He has his own segment. He absolutely does. That, that he will be hitting it. Yes. You know what I love about the, the, the Titans countdown stuff is people that listen, and a lot of people listen, I'm sure millions, is that millions, millions, mm-hmm. millions, is that there's some there's some real information that you won't get anywhere else. And it pertains to what goes on in the game, because we do a lot of work getting ready for these broadcasts. It may sound like and Mike Keith has said this before. It sounds like it's pretty extemporaneous because it's conversational between all of us. But we prepare for this stuff and we want to bring our listeners things that they can't get anywhere else. So I, I love doing it. And let I, me say I this. love that. Coach Max segment for everyone listening, all the OT people and everyone that listens to Titans radio. You'll be a lot smarter if you listen to that segment because Coach Mack will pretty much tell you exactly what's going to happen in the game and what could happen in the game. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean. Jump they, in there, Amy. They nailed it. <laughs> it's well, your show. Well, but this is what we do on <laughs> Titans radio. We try and make people smarter just all the way around. Well, we try to do that on the OTP We do well. it on the OTP. We do it on the Titans Amy Coach Mack podcast. We are all about – Educating and informing. And we'll open back up Amy's AFC South notebook because, you know, yes, I the, like the that. division is, you know, certainly a thing and, and keeping everyone uh, up to speed on what's going on with the other three teams in the division. That'll happen. We'll talk to Coach Vrabel at the end of things and uh, talk about what the keys are for what he wants to see from uh, the 2022 Titans it's before they take fun. on Baltimore. It's always fun to ask him his keys in preseason. <laughs> well, so, he's so interested to answer that in preseason. Well, I think – Can I, I just – I have I'm, a feeling you will word it correctly. Where it, He'll still be smarmy, but you, you'll get something. Can, <laughs> can I just say how much I enjoy doing broadcast prep with Mike Vrabel? You love Mike Vrabel anyway. I do. And I, I just love – because I just <laughs> – I just he is is the best. He, doing those, those broadcast preps with he and John Robinson during the season – that's quality stuff. It is quality stuff. Some of us have to endure more of the quality stuff than others. Sorry, well, Mikey. that's it's okay. <laughs> that's what that's what makes it enjoyable. But for you me. say he, it, you've said this consistently through, and this is year five of Rabel. He reminds you a lot of Ditka, a lot, a whole lot, a lot of Mike Ditka, a lot of Ditka. Because and and, it, and I think back those times when I was really a young coach, you know, coming in with Mike Ditka, and I would just watch him interact with everybody but he always he always kept your interest but it always was with a little bit of a twinkle in his eye knowing hey there's an edge there's an edge there's an edge there that uh, you, you've got to appreciate and I tell you who appreciates it are the players he coaches they appreciate it they and, and they may not always agree with it and they didn't always agree with Mike Ditka but they appreciated it and they respected it uh, I just – I think we're so fortunate to have him here as the head coach and John Robinson as general manager. That's, that's why this is a real football place. All right, so let's go around the room and talk about the player that you most want to see in Thursday's preseason game with Baltimore. Again, it kicks off at 6.30 Central. Coach Mack, you go first. Racy McMath. Okay. Because to me, uh, he, is, he is a great example of a difference between a first-year player, lower-round draft choice – and a second-year player that has become a professional. And you can, you can tell that the work – because he had a long way to go. He didn't get a lot of catches at LSU. 
He was drafted in here because of his physical characteristics. He was an excellent gunner on special teams. They knew that he had something to him because he, he really contributed on teams a lot at LSU. But because of the depth of the receiver group they had down there, he didn't get to play a lot. So last year was a complete learning experience for him as far as nuance of receivers, what it took. And, you know, he worked through, he worked through a whole season of not a whole lot of recognition. But you could tell the work that he put in. And then the off season, he's physically stronger, and he is so much more nuanced with what he's doing. And then he does the thing that receivers have to do if they want to get noticed. When it's thrown to him, he goes and gets it. And he's been doing that this entire training camp. I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching him against another team. Against Baltimore, I really want to see him. I'm really looking forward to watching him when Tampa Bay comes in here, when the Cardinals come in here for practice, and then watching him in those preseason games. Racy McMath is my guy. Somebody made the point last year, and I hate to use someone else's quote and not directly attribute it to them, and you may remember, I want to say it was a player who said that Racy McMath would benefit so much being around Julio Jones based on the fact that they are both that same size guy. I mean, Racy is big. Racy is 6'3". He's 220 pounds, like Julio. He can run in the upper 4'3s to low 4'4s. He never had the productivity, but just watching what Julio did, how he used his body to his advantage – and, and I think you can see some of that. You can see that – and Coach talks about him being more nuanced, and that's exactly what it means is it's like Racy understands who, it, who he can be now and is taking advantage of that. It escapes me who that is, and I remember that. And I, I think that certainly is a byproduct of those kinds of things. But I'm going to tell you another thing that I think has made him a step in getting to being a pro – as Coach Mack would say, and that is his former teammate and current teammate in Christian Fulton. Christian Fulton has really worked with him a lot in terms of learning each other's nuances and and just, you know, being the positions that they play, they would play against each other in practice, obviously. And he is, you know, Christian Fulton's kind of mentored him in that way, being a, a year ahead of him. And so, I, I, listen, if you're going to, be a good receiver in this and you've got one of your better cornerbacks in this thing helping you out from that angle and you know keys and directionals and you know key and diagnose type things he's obviously just drinking that up as much as he possibly can so Ashley Farrell's already found it the person who used the comparison and talked about Racy McMath learning from Julio Jones was actually A.J. Brown so good for AJ. He got that one 100 percent right. I think 100 percent he did. Before we get off of Ray, let, let me say this too. Okay, we've got an excellent receiver coach here, mm-hmm. and and he, I mean, he was not just because he played for me, and not just because I know him very well, but he's developed players since he's been a coach, and we've witnessed it here. Guys, lower lower tier guys that have ability. Rob Moore is an excellent, excellent receiver coach, and and I think he's he's got a presence of himself in the room because players know what he was. I mean, this is a former first round pick that was a big time player in this league, but he's got a good demeanor. He's got a good way with these guys. You've got to coach receivers differently. It, they're 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 a different group, and I just I I think you know I would be remiss if I didn't say something about the the coaching aspect of it because when you see players develop, it's on the player, you know, essentially. But they've got to have help, and that's what good NFL coaches do is develop players. Well, and to Rhett's point, I've seen the secondary and the receivers working together this camp more than I have ever seen before. It's intentional the way that they are kind of partnering up and coming over to the side and working on different things. Really cool thing to see, and you have to imagine that that starts at the coaching level and trickles all the way down. So I think that that's a really cool thing. And it's going to be exciting to see Racy McMath, but also all of our receivers, especially some of the younger guys, play against Baltimore. And remind you that Racy McMath now wears number 13. Last year as a rookie, he was 81. He is 13 now. So want to make sure that you know that. So you're looking for the right guy. Amy Wells, Titans player you want to see most in Thursday night's Baltimore preseason game. So I have gone down an 
offensive line rabbit hole throughout this training camp, and I haven't really been able to come out of it yet. I started one day, and I was like, I'm going to watch the offensive line, and now I'm obsessed with the offensive line somehow. I'm not sure what has come over me. That has drawn my attention for at least a week. And so the person that I'm most excited about seeing in Baltimore is Nicholas petit Frere. I am excited to watch him go up against – a different defense. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see him get some game reps at full speed. And I'm excited to see what we've been seeing on the practice field and the things that have caught our attention in some of those reps and see if that's transferable to a game day situation. We know that he's big. We know that he's incredibly smart. Is he able to put it all together and take it to the next level. So that's what I'm really excited about seeing. I'm excited about seeing that line as a whole, though. I think you're going to get to see a lot of different parts kind of in and out and moving around as the coaching staff continues to try and find that chemistry and those right pieces. But I'm really excited about seeing him specifically. You could never tell that she's trained by Coach Mack, could you? <laughs> I'm so proud. I, you should be. <laughs> I mean, I really am. But for I, I, Amy I, Wells. No, no, no. I'm so proud. Who grew up loving Terrell Owens, that that was her favorite player, that now she talks about a rookie offensive tackle, a third-round pick from Ohio State, Nicholas Petit-Frier. Makes me so proud. Oh, you I should. Mean, <laughs> no, no. You know, Are you going to be okay? Can you Coach continue? Coach no, is beaming. When I, He's when beaming. I, no, He's just I've, getting I've, emotional. I've got a little tear. Yeah. When, when, I, when, I, when I came in here and Amy Wells and Ashley Farrell asked me if I would sit down and really – talk NFL football to them because they work in the football business and they wanted to learn it. And they were serious and we grinded hard for six months and have continued to do that forever. But it, it makes me so happy. So happy. And she took it so far as to marry an offensive line. Yeah, I didn't, well, I did. I, I, I didn't know if she was going that far with I mean, it. I mean, that's you know, a, I had wow, nothing, I had that's nothing, a commitment. I had nothing to do with that. I really buy in, you guys. Like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all the way. But real, I mean, this is a big dude. It's you can't a big dude. look out on the field and not notice him, and he's strong. And he can play. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, he's a brand new guy. He's a rookie. Obviously, he's going to do some rookie stuff. Sure. But, I mean, he's he's strong like an ox. But, Amy, to your point, Ooh. that's a smart young man. Yeah. Well, he's going to play for the Titans at some point. I mean, he this is a guy you watch him, you go, okay. At some point, he plays. When that It's like what I said about Raiden's last year. At some point, you just know. Mm -hmm. Some guys got it. Some guys don't. And he's got it. He's got it. Well done, Amy. So, I'm excited. Well done. Tune Rhett in. Bryan, your player that you want to see the most in a Titans uniform in Thursday's preseason game at Baltimore? I'll see Coach Max 13, Racy McMath, and I will see Amy Wells' 78, Nicholas petit Frere, and I will raise you with number 21, the 35th overall pick, Roger McCrary, the cornerback from Auburn. That young man has started out really, really nicely in this two weeks of camp here. When Shane Bowen, the defensive coordinator, says at a presser, in front of all of us, that he doesn't look and act like a rookie, that gets your attention when your coordinator says those kinds of things. The guy is scrappy. He uh, is very physical. I had an INT of, of Brian Tannehill the other day. He just uh, continues to stack those practices, and I'm very excited to see what he does when the lights come on and he plays at M&T Bank Stadium. You know, what I like uh, about this conversation is, and you can take it back to all of us in here, our draft prep. And when we did the OTP on the road talking draft and we started getting down to those next tiers, and you would always you would always ask somewhere in those segments, you know, the various venues we were at, who are the guys below, you know, the top 10, the top 15 guys that you really want to see? And, and these two guys came up because when you watch tape and you look at it, what you see are those types of traits – but to his point about, about McCrary, this guy, when you watched him against SEC receivers, was always in phase. And in phase, I mean by that he's, he's in the proper hip position regardless of the break, whether it's a long stem downfield, whether it's a short stem in and out, whether, whether it's an option route, he's always in phase. And when you watched him out here, the first time we ever saw him out here in, in May – he acted like he belonged. 
He acted like he belonged. And there's a way guys carry themselves when they're on the field, you know, where some guys look like a puppy dropped in the middle of a freeway, you know, where they just are spinning around and they don't know where it's coming from. But this guy was non-bothered by anything except his job. I like the player. The three of you have surprised me. Can What what were you going to say? I was going to ask for an honorable mention. (laughs) Well, well, let me me do this real quick. (laughs) The three of you have surprised me. No one said Traylon Burks. I was surprised because clearly Thursday night's preseason game is big for him. No one said Caleb Farley, which Thursday night's preseason game is big for him as he gets back out on the field coming from the ACL. Amy, did you have another one? Mike, can I say why we didn't? Okay. You said give us one. Now, Amy, anytime we do this exercise, <laughs> it's true. It's true. anytime we do this exercise, you're right. It's Amy multiple choice always comes up with yeah, but no, I go ahead. Amy. I prepared two in case someone picked mine, but then I really, as we went around, no one picked my second one, and I think it deserves mentioning. Okay, Kyle Phillips. Excited to see him not only because of what he'll do as a receiver, which we've seen him do some good stuff in practice as a receiver so it's very exciting but for the punt return stuff because you can't simulate that out here no there is no way that you can simulate that in practice but I'll without ta- killing i'll him. take that in another direction and this may sound really strange i don't know that we need to see that much from kyle i think he is what he is i think he can play i think he's gonna play i i just I think we have an accurate picture. I think the big question about Kyle Phillips is how does he stand up to the pounding? Yeah. But he can play, right? He's shown every indication. I, I mean, he, and the quarterbacks have confidence in him, and he's smart. and So that's why I would not have listed him. Oh, see, he was he's my number two. But I want to say I know what he has done in college. I know what I have seen him do out here. But especially being a returner, in the NFL, that's a car accident. Well, it is. Like, every single time, it's a full-on just major highway collision. And so, can he do that? Can he do that multiple times? Can he be successful doing that? These are the things that I want to see. So, I, th- I threw out some others that didn't get mentioned. Another one is Ryan Stonehouse. Ooh. The punter from Colorado State. Brett Kern is this team's punter, and... He's going to get work, there's no doubt. But I think we'll also see Stonehouse, and man, does he have a leg. Now, how does it translate? Does he get in the game and kick it 15 yards? Does he kick it 115 yards? You don't know. And that's why in a game, I want to see what he does. For what we've been seeing on the practice field at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, can it translate? And that's the most valid part of all this. And and Stonehouse – is somebody that I've been watching this last two weeks. To say that he has a leg is an understatement. He, wow. I mean, he has a cannon. And the hang time, consistently, Mike, has been around five seconds every time. I mean, but can he place it where Brett Kern places it? That's the, the question. And the other part of it, too, Coach, and, and you've seen this through all your time in the NFL, there are some guys that when the lights come on, they fade. And then there are other guys – that come out of nowhere when the lights come on. That's a real thing on both fronts. No, you make such a great point about punters especially. Oh, yeah. And, and place kickers. I mean, that's why these guys orbit in a different universe than any other players in the National Football League because they're like professional golfers. I mean, they can they can gain it, lose it, gain it, lose it, gain it, lose it. And you make a very great point about in-game time. And really, the thing about being a place kicker, let's talk about kicking just a minute. Place, about being a place, everything's pretty settled when they kick. Now you got pressure to make points, but a punter, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. It's a deeper snap. It's more people coming at you from different angles. And then, to Rhett's point is, and your point too, it's not so much in this league how far you can hammer it. It's how high and how accurate you can kick it, depending on what Craig Ackerman is trying to do, how he wants to level his coverage and cut the field in half. So that's where you want to see this kid. How many clubs does he have in his bag early enough to make an impression? Because a lot of punters don't get a job their rookie year. It takes them until their second, third, or fourth year. They travel around the the world as it is. They're at tryouts every Tuesday. They get a game one place, and then the regular punter comes back. It's why a guy like Andy Lee 
has lasted so long in this league because he's just been so good and people trust him. Brett Kern is trustable. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, when Brett Kern walks out on the field, you know what you're going to get from right. Brett Kern. Consistency. And you know what you're not going to get. Yes. A which disaster. is a guy who's going to fade because the lights are on and he's scared. Well, remember how Brett Kern got here? Because I was coaching here when Brett Kern came here, you know, a few years back. Well, thanks, Josh McDaniels. He was cut yeah. at Denver. Because Josh cut. McDaniels was basically Captain Queeg in the Kane Mutiny. Yeah, he, uh, he, he wasn't. He, <laughs> his, this, at that time he was. He says he's not anymore. No, no. This this second iteration uh, now, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what he is. But, I mean, we had Craig Hendrick at the time. Right. But I can remember Alan Lowry coming into Jeff Fisher's office and saying, hey, we got to go get this guy. So that's the world they live in. That is. So it's Baltimore Thursday night at 630. Airtime on Titans Radio is 5.30 for Titans Countdown with Rhett Bryan and Amy Wells. Does the Baltimore rivalry thing factor in at all in a preseason game? I wouldn't think so. I mean, they've played each other quite a bit in the last two, three years. We'll play them next year here, by the way, in the regular season Mm -hmm. as part of the 23 schedule. Yep. I don't think the rivalry is is what it was when they were both in the AFC Central way back when. If this was a regular season game, I would 100% say yes. That would be a thing. But a preseason game, I say no. I, I, I'm going to disagree oh. about the rivalry. Okay. We always do broadcasts with the windows wide open so we can feel it. You can feel them. And you can feel how much they hate the Titans when we're up there. They really for do. For real. They hate us. They hate us for good reason. For good reason. We hate them too. But not in the preseason. 26 games, 13 and 13. 13 and th- yep. That's what I say. It's a slugfest. And it always has been a slugfest. 13 to 12, 16 to 10 back in the old well, days. 12 to 8. Yeah. Four, 14 to 11. Oh. I mean, going back to the to the Tennessee Oilers days. Listen, some of the my fondest and most terrible Titans memories have come at the hands of the Baltimore Ravens. Absolutely. I, I mean, obviously, when you were coaching here oh. in, in January of 2009 in the divisional round and – you know, CJ2K, Chris Johnson has 72 yards in the first half, and they take him out of that game. Twisted his ankle. On purpose. And I then mean, the, took it, him out. And then they get the free play five seconds after the play clock has run out that sets up the game-winning field goal. So you're raising everybody's temperature yeah, already on, 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 on the Ravens. and that, that. But for the preseason game, I agree. It's not – because here's, here's the reason why it's not. you got two veteran head coaches. They know what this preseason game is about. It's about developing your players. Yeah, but the last time we were there, John Harbaugh is, like, trying to fight Vrabel before the game because we're standing on his logo. Amy, Amy, (laughs) real season. Yeah, but that's – Real season. But that's not – Adult, but you know what? Veteran coaches. That's one of the great That's memories. Goofery. No, no, no. It, 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 it is adult <laughs> coaches. It is adult coaches. This is a different time. I look. Believe me. And from a coach's perspective, that I've done in this league, you can turn it on and off for that type of stuff. I'm just saying, watch around corners and things. Harbaugh might be there. With the rivalry slide. goes back to the in- <laughs> to the inception of the Ravens and still the Houston Oilers at the time, 1996. And they were in the AFC Central. They were a division rival at the time. Everybody agree that outside the division, the Ravens are the biggest rivalry? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Here's the other thing, Mike, about this. Outside the division? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's something else about the Ravens and the Titans over the years. They play the same kind of football. They do. They play the same kind of football. And that always makes for really interesting matchups. You want to hear something weird? Sure. So oh, absolutely. So we we delved into this. Rep Brian and I delved into this. Well, that's why it's weird. No, well, yep. But there I think is. the OT more on the latter, not the former. <laughs> I think the OT people will enjoy this though, because we did some research about the players in franchise history who can claim to be Houston Oilers, Tennessee Oilers, and Tennessee Titans. Wow. Okay. So. You had to have been all three, and you, and the, the rule is you have to have been active for a game. So it can't be you were on a practice squad or you were on a training camp roster. Okay. And Rhett and I looked this over. Dwight Spradlin, one of our heroes from Media Relations, yes. took the time to look this over, and he actually added one that I had missed. There are 21 players. Really? 21? 21 players who can claim to be Houston Oilers, 
Tennessee Oilers and Tennessee Titans. Blaine Bishop, Joe Bowden, Al Del Greco, Anthony Dorsett, not Tony. No, Anthony. Josh Evans, Henry Ford, Eddie George, Brad Hopkins, Steve Jackson, Terry Killens, who is now one of three former NFL players who's an An NFL official. official, Jason Lehman, Bruce Matthews, Steve McNair, Michael Rohn, Marcus Robertson, Eddie Robinson, former Congressman John Runyon, Chris Sanders, Rodney Thomas, Baron Wortham, and Frank Wycheck. You know what? The, the thing that strikes me with those names, there's some players. There's some real players. There's some real players in, the, in that group. Which is how they made it through. Yes. From the last year of the Houston Oilers, 96, the two years of the Tennessee Oilers, and then 99 to the Titans. These guys played in four home stadiums in four consecutive seasons. That's crazy. That's a really interesting deal. Houston yeah. Astronaut. Yeah. guys made on that. Liberty Bowl, Vanderbilt. Nissan Stadium. Well, what got me started with it, too, was all of the people now wearing Tennessee Oilers gear. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Well, well, here's what's funny. In 1997 and 98, you basically couldn't give it away. Nope. And that's the part of the story that most of these people wearing it now don't know, is that it it was like, I mean, I had some because I worked for the team and I liked it. But the fan, I mean, it was it didn't sell out. There's no oil in Tennessee. There's no oil in Tennessee. People were resentful because they wanted their own name. And it really wasn't, you know, when it sold was when Mr. Adams made the announcement in November of 98 that we were going to become the Titans. And so when people realized at that point that it was a collector's item, they ran out and got it. Yeah, that sounds about right. But in 97 and for most of 98, it was not a big seller. And now... All the young people are wearing it around because it's hip, it which is, is hip. which is fun. You know what that list makes me think of? That's twenty-one people that get to go to two alumni parties every year. There you go. And Amy throws an incredible alumni party. Oh, she does. <laughs> All right. So now that the season is here, we're on the air at five thirty on Thursday on Titans Radio with Titans Countdown. So I've got a little quiz. Are you ready? I didn't Everybody know there grab was your pen be... and paper. Oh, there's a game? And I'm going to give the questions. You don't need to shout out the answers. You just need to write down. Ashley Farrell, could I have a little music here for the quiz? Thank you. All right. I'm furious. All right. You don't have to say anything. Just listen to the question. Write down the answer. <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens have had three, four, five, or six coaches in their history. Was it three? Was it four? Was it five or was it six? Write down the answer. How many teams went 3-0 and in the 2021 preseason? Was it five, six, seven, or eight? How many teams went 3-0 and in the 2021 preseason? Five, six, seven, or eight. True or false? The Ravens led the AFC North after 13 weeks of the 2021 season. True or false? The Ravens led the AFC North after 13 weeks of the 2021 season. Question four. The Ravens lost their final how many games in 2021? Did they lose their final five, six, seven, or eight? Here's a little bit of a question for you. (coughs) Question five. (laughs) Which team has led the NFL in sacks in each of the last five years? Which team has led the NFL in sacks in each of the last five years? And finally, because we're playing the Ravens, and this is your preseason opener quiz on the OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. How many retired numbers do the Baltimore Ravens have? Zero, one, two, or three. Zero, one, two, or three. All right, so let's go back to question one. The Ravens have had three coaches in their history. Ted Marchabroda. Brian Billick, and now John Harbaugh. How many people in our group had three? Not me. I had four. Rhett Bryan had three, so Rhett Bryan leads one to nothing. How many teams went 3-0 and in the 2021 preseason? There were seven. Who had seven? I had six. I had six. I had five. All right. True or false? The Ravens led the AFC North after 13 weeks of the 2021 season. Oh, a bit of a trick question. It's false. They did lead the AFC North after week 12 
Amy Wells? I got that wrong. Okay, Coach? False. Okay. Head false. 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 So, Rhett Bryan leads 2-1 to zero. The Ravens lost their final six game of the 2021 season. They were 8-3. and three. They ended 8-9. and nine. Coach Mack? Six. Six? I had seven. Okay. I had five. All right. So, Coach Mack and Rhett are tied at two. Amy hasn't gotten one right. I hate <laughs> Which team led the NFL in sacks in each of the last five years, Rick Bryan? I had the Los Angeles Rams. Coach? Ravens. I put the Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers are correct. Amy Wells is on the board. Two for Coach, two for Rhett, one for Amy. How many retired numbers did the Baltimore Ravens have? The answer is zero. Got that one too, Amy fools. Wells is at two. I had wrong three. I had two. Wow, you all tied. Yes. 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 No Amy, one goes Amy. to the bonus Great round. Comeback. Great comeback. Great comeback. What a rally by Amy Wells. Who hates quizzes? I hate these games. And I hate you hate ties. ties. And, hate, and hates ties. You know the Titans' last tie? 1971 against the New Orleans Saints, 13 13. 1971. Yes, so it's been 51 years since the Titans have had a tie. Yeah, I missed that one. You missed that? Oh, yeah, you <laughs> missed weren't that alive. game. You weren't alive. By many years. By many years. Well, this was Mike a, Keith, great quiz. Thank you. Well, it's a, you know, I like to do a little something. No, to it's celebrate. a great quiz. Some people have a, a gathering with food. I like to throw out a the quiz. The thing I like <laughs> about the quizzes on the OTP is Amy's face when you say it's a quiz. I know. All right, so again, we want everyone listening. And, and if you're going to watch it on TV, that's cool. We're, we're for that. Just mute the TV. Well, but you, know, but you need an hour beforehand. You at do. At least, because, listen. Charles Davis and Dan Helley and, and Corey Curtis do a great job on television. We love them. But Titans Countdown, 5.30 Central Time. Rhett Bryan, Amy Wells, Dave McGinnis, Coach Mike Vrabel is on the show. Lots of information. You'll probably find out who's going to be playing if Vrabel will tell us. Mario Andretti will not be on there. Which is disappointing. Yes. But still cool you got still to meet Still cool him. that I got to meet him. Still cool. For our friends at Farm Bureau Health Plans, and knowing that you're going to hear us next from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Dave McGinnis, Rhett Bryan, Amy Wells, Mike Keith, thank you for listening to the OT. Welcome to the big show where the legends go. Everybody knows it's our house. Fighting for Tennessee, making history.